morning we're learning a Maimah on Pasha's Mateis Masay. Uh, this Maimah was said in 1969. And this Shabbos is uh, going to be, uh, God willing, Shabbos Vorchim and Shabbos Chazak because we are going to complete uh, the book of Amidbar. So this uh, Maimah is focusing on the on the Pasuk in, I believe, Shlishi. This week, Pasha, the third portion. Um, that the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of God, had a tremendous amount of animals, flocks, uh, and cattle, sheep, goats. They saw the other side of the, the eastern side of the Jordan. It's a place that is uh, very good for pasture. By Yemru, and they said to Moshe, the, the sons of uh, the tribe of God and the tribe of Reuben, came to Moshe and they asked him for this piece of land. Yutan So let us uh, stay here on the other side. Um, so this is a good place for our animals. Let's not cross the Arden. I heard one of the uh, commentaries on on the question, how come they had more than everybody else? Yeah, they all got to Right, so you say uh, that the reason why they wanted to stay because they had a lot of animals. <laughs> why did they have a lot of animals? Why the tribe of Yehuda, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of uh, Shimon? Why didn't they have a lot of animals? So one of the one of the answers I heard is that they 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 are the only ones who did not uh, eat the animals. They ate the man. They loved the man so much that so they didn't touch the animals. So they didn't touch the animals. The animals multiplied a lot. Right. And that's why they had a lot. Right. But it shows that they were they were righteous because uh, they they said if Hashem is giving us bread from heaven why should we eat animals? Right. Especially those who there was a, a group of uh, that complained. Right. And said that it's gonna be it's a spoiled bread and one day it's gonna be it's gonna bust in our intestines because they didn't have to. Uh, it was a hundred percent. Nutritious, they didn't have to go to the bathroom. Right. No waste. So, Rebbe Marash has a Maimur that was said a hundred years earlier. So, in in 1869. So, the, the Rebbe Marash, which is the fourth Lubavitcher Rebbe, he goes into the uh, depth of why they wanted to stay on the other side. Some say they wanted to stay with Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh-huh. Saying Moshe Rabbeinu is not crossing, we're staying also. Right. I feel, well, my, my, let's see what the Rebbe Marash said. That was my stump, something I remember. But it's. Rebbe <laughs> So there's a mimer of the Alter Rebbe where he speaks about the difference between Moshe Rabbeinu and the rest of the, uh, between Yosef and the rest of the tribes. It, in Torah Parshas Vayechi over there he speaks about what's the difference between Moshe and Yosef and the rest of the tribes. Why Yosef became the king, the other, tri- and 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 what what level they were, what level he was. So it says Yeshashvot Imeroitzay. The tribes were shepherds. They chose a job that would not uh, confuse them. There would be no interruptions and they can do their job and still be involved with godliness, be connected to Likus. It, it's not going to be an interruption for them. No confusions. Gambes is even while they're working, 
they would never be separated because they're involved with, with um, worldly matters. Shank and Yosef, on the other hand, comes to Yosef. In even though he was involved with worldly matters, he says that he came home to do his work. He was doing his, uh, also accounting for Potifa. Yeah. Even when, and later on, when he became the, the vice of Mitzrayim, which was practically the king, doing everything. Uh, the, the, it says the uh, power said no one should raise his hand or feet without your uh, without your uh, say. So I told Moed he was very busy, he was very involved with Mitzrayim. Not only that, but the whole nation, all their needs, everything has to go through you. It's, Tremendous amount of work. It did not disturb at all. A the serving of Hashem of Yosef. Even when he was, when he was involved with running the country, Kashivas Cheshboyim was doing all these uh, calculations. You know, when you when you involved with such a things, you have to do projections and right. <laughs> constantly. It's always uh, accounting, <laughs> lots of accounting. And if you my soul, you recover the likus. But even when he was involved with running the country, he was still recover the likus, a chariot for godliness. So we did not. This is a, a, something that was we did not see with the other tribes, because the other tribes did not allow, did not even engage in the world. So the world should not confuse them. Yeah. On the other hand, comes Yosef, and he's fully involved with the world. He can say that he was even immersed in the world to the highest degree, but remains chariot for godliness. That's what the Alter Rebbe tells us about the difference between Yosef and his brothers. It's like um, with the the other tribes, they didn't even put themselves into a situation. Well, it might be an interruption for them. We don't know how Yehuda would be, uh, how Yehuda, for example, or Uven or Shimon, how they would be, uh, act if they had all these tribulations and all these... Uh, uh, Yosef had, but what we know is that they they purposely chose this job. Not that they didn't have any any talents and they couldn't and they could not uh, do something else. Obviously, they, they were very talented people, but they chose specifically to be shepherds. So, they, so the world will not uh, uh, confuse them. They will always be connected to Hashem. On the other hand, Yosef, with all of his work and with all of the, uh, you would think, all the the occupations that he had, but remained connected to Hashem. So, uh, the Rebbe goes at, uh, and continues to explain the difference between Yosef and his brothers. Each one served Hashem in, in a, with Shleimus in a perfect way. Sharei says about Avram, we had a small Yitzchak had Esav, Yaakov with also Shleimah. Yaakov had a children were complete. With also Shleimah. Shleimah means Shleimus, completion. Ela shoyu chalukim l'shtei tnus ba'avid agufa. But they had two ways of serving Hashem. The the way Yosef served Hashem is being involved with the world. And still remains connected to Hashem. And the best of the tribes is separating themselves from the world and and serving Hashem. V'tam adovo, why there was such a difference between them? It says that the root of where the tribes were originated from, 
the tribes are rooted in Bria Yetzirah these three worlds, creation, formation, and action. It's connected with Shnei Moso, Baka, the twelve bulls, Oilam Apirud, the world of separation. There's a whole explanation on this concept. What is Shnei Moso, Baka? What is the twelve bulls? So it's explained that when, uh, I think it's in the book of Melochim, it describes the Shlem Melech, he wanted to deliver the utensils to the Beit HaMikdash. How do you bring them to the Beit HaMikdash without them being contaminated? You don't know, maybe there are burial places on the way. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> I have no idea. You have to be to come up with something. Yeah. So it says, so Shlem Amech built a pool, a swimming pool. Okay. And he places the swimming pool, he took the swimming pool, he, he, let's say he, he built like a, let's say a spa size yeah. pool, and he put it on 12 bulls. Yeah. And he put the utensils on in the pool. <laughs> right. And then the, the, the bulls carried the, the pool into the Vesa Mikdash. Ah. Okay. So if you're in the water, they don't eat in Kabul too much. Right. So in Kabul and Chassidus, it's explained that this is connected with the world of Bria. The world of Bria is, is different than the world of Atsilus. The world of emanation, the world of creation. There's big differences between the two worlds. What's the difference between the main difference between Atsilus and Bria? is that Atzillus is a world of unity, and Bria is a world of separation. Okay, that's the, the biggest striking difference between the two. This is the world of unity? No, no, no. This is the world of action. action. We're not even getting... We're talking about Atzillus and Bria. Uh, Atzillus is the highest world, the world of emanation, and the Bria is the world that, to follow, uh, the world after Atzillus. So what's the difference between the two? One is unity, and one is separation. Meaning, if you look, listen to the word Bria, Bria means creation, right? Yeah. It's almost like from that point and on, the world is created. Before Bria, it's, it's a godly world. It didn't even get to a physical world. So Bria is the beginning of a physical world. The only thing is in order to start with a physical world, you have to create so much concealment. The concealment on one hand it enables the creation of the world, but on the other hand, it creates separation. I mean, it creates, I'm separate, I'm, I'm, I'm my own entity, I'm my own being. Actually, it, it says uh, in the writings of the Arizal that uh, the world of Bria is primarily uh, good. It's a little bit of bad, but, and then the Yitzira is 50-50, and then our world, Asiya, the world of action, is primarily bad and, most, and a little bit of good. But this is the main thing between Atsilus and uh, Bria. One is unity and one is uh, separation. So what's the connection between the 12 bulls that we, that we speak about, Shlema Melech created, to the created beings? That the reality of the world and created beings are comprised of 12 levels. How do you describe a reality? You have space, location, limited space. It says six, six corners because you have uh, north, south, east, west, and up and down. Right? That's a misuse. And the number of places, meaning the corners, that's what they call it, tzovis, the corners, is, it makes it 12. That's physically. Innerly, it's referring to the six emotive attributes. As they unite, they are comprised of 12 levels. And that's that's Chayos HaKodesh. But that's the level of, called Chayos HaKodesh, level of Behema. And the primary revelation starts in the world of Bria. 
that's the beginning of created beings that are separated from godliness. So when you say Yud Beis Gula Alachsun, the twelve corners are connected with twelve boko, with the twelve bulls, which, in essence, what it symbolizes the the physical it symbolizes physical reality, the level of Vema, which is the twelve levels of the emotive attributes. And Al-Tarebbe explains this concept in the Torah that the 12 tribes, let's figure out the 12 tribes, they were Melkova, they were a chariot for Malchus. And that's what they are called, yud Base Boko. Three of them turning to the north, three of them turning to the south, three turning to the other side. And then he writes, Vayom Alem Elamal, there was ocean above them. I told you there was a body of water that was carried by these 12 bulls. What is Yam represent? Yam represents, water represents Malchus, the Atzilus. So Yud Beis Boko is referring to the world of Bria. What is higher than Bria? Atzilus. So it says the bulls are themselves Behema, separation. That starts in the world of Bria. What gives the world of Bria, what is higher than Bria, Atzilus. So the water represents Atzilus in this case. Anyway, this is just on a, a note, that because he says the Bria, Yitzirasi, Arilom Apiru, that world of creation, formation, action is the world of Piru. Then, Velochen, Shayechusom, in line 5, Visaskusom, Binyon Arilom. Now the tribes, their involvement in the world, their job, if they would go into other businesses, other occupations, if the tribes would choose other occupation but uh, being shepherds. Remember, we said the tribes were able to do something else, but they chose specifically these jobs. Why? Because they, wa- they didn't want to be separated from Alukus. But we saw that Yosef was not separated from Alukus, even though he was fully occupied with other things. So what's the answer? It tells you, no, they're rooted from a different place. I mean, the root of the neshama for the, of the tribes and Yosef were two different places. So what is the root for the tribes? It tells you, They're coming from the world of separation. They're associated with with, with, uh, with not with Atzilus. And that's why it could have created Pirud. If they would have get involved with other things, it might have been separation for them. It might have affected them. And therefore, when they needed to pick a job, it says clearly that Hashem will bless you with anything that you choose to do. So, Parnaso, livelihood, sustenance comes from above. The blessing of Hashem, Birkas Hashem. But you have to do Ishtadlus, you have to do something on your own. You have to do something naturally to make it a, to, to make a clay, to make a vessel for Hashem's blessing. And therefore, the tribes chose to be shepherds. It's a job that's being done outside of the commotion, of the city commotion. The outside the, the hustling and bustling in the city. It's something that would not confuse them. It reminds me of the story that I heard one of the great Hasidim went to, uh, when they left Russia, he came to Israel and uh, he needed a job. So he went to a factory and he asked uh, for a job. He looked like a simple man. So they gave him like a, a, a job that would be uh, like carrying things, like a schlepper who would yeah. carry stuff, heavy, heavy duty stuff. That's what he would do. So one day 
the uh, the owner of the factory asked him a question. He was passing by or whatever. He saw him, asked him a question. He answered him. So he realized that this guy is uh, is, is intelligent. He's a very knowledgeable person. And he's working. He said, it doesn't make sense. He said, from now on, I want you to work in the office. Yeah. Got him to the office, told him, okay, you do this. He gave him paperwork to do. So a few days later, he comes back to the, to the owner. He said, I want to go to my other job. He said, I don't understand. This job is easy. You're sitting in an air conditioning room. It's comfortable. Why would you want to schlep uh, boxes and schlep things? So he said, when I was schlepping boxes, my head was not occupied. So I could think about uh, my... I think about Torah, I can think about learning, chassidus, things that I was involved with, my mind was involved with. Yeah. But when I walk in your office, my mind is occupied. Although my body is resting, but my mind is occupied, and I can't think about other things. I have to think about the work that I do. So similar to this, you see with the tribes, they, they figured out if they will be involved with the, uh, if they'll be in the city, right. it will disturb them. Mashain Ken Yosef. In line twelve, it says Mashain Ken Yosef Abchin as Tzadik Elyon. Yosef is Tzadik Elyon. What is Tzadik Elyon? Supernal righteous, supernal Tzadik. What does that mean? It says Yosef was a Mashpia, was a giver. Yosef was uh, had the capacity to reveal godliness from above, to draw down godliness. To reveal it from above down. Binyamin is called Tzadik Tachto, and Yosef was called Tzadik Elyon. Binyamin is a Makabal, he's a recipient, and uh, Yosef was a giver. So Yosef is a Shpo, a flow that comes from above down. Yosef was a Mashbir, he's the giver. All the Amshochas, all the revelation, Godly revelation, created being happened through the Neshama of Yosef. Binyamin is the other, the other way around. Binyamin is the elevation from below. So Yosef is bringing godliness into the world. Yosef bringing to the world closer to, to godliness. You understand the difference? It's, it's the opposite. It's the reverse. But each one is involved with something else. Y- y- Binyamin is receiving from Yosef. And then he takes it and brings it up. Yosef is the opposite taps into to godliness, the supernal levels, spiritual powers, and it brings them down, schleps them down. So both of them are called tzaddikim. Actually, the Gemara says that uh, there are four tzaddikim that uh, died because of the sin of the snake, and uh, one of them is uh, Binyamin. Oh, uh, yeah. Meaning that he had no sins on his own. The only reason why he passed away because of the snake. Meaning the original sin of right. Adam that was decreed that people will die. So he said, interesting uh, point, right? Tzaddikim in general, what is a tzaddik? Tzaddik is someone that is connecting the giver and the taker. Yosef is a tzaddik elion that connects the giver to the taker and brings the flow from above down. Binyamin is a tzaddik tachten. A lower tzaddik, which means that he's connecting the recipient to the giver. See the difference. Yosef, a tzaddik, in, the title tzaddik is a new uh, uh, concept of what tzaddik means. Tzaddik is a connector. He tells you tzaddik is a connector. Now there's two types of tzaddik. There's a connector that takes the giver and he brings it to the taker. And there's a tzaddik that takes the taker and brings it to the giver. Okay? It's like, 
Let's say you need something, okay? Yeah. So, and I come and I take the tzaddik, I take, I take uh, someone that can help you, yeah. whatever the problem is, I take someone that can help you and I bring him here to you. That's Yosef. Or, you have a problem, I take you to someone that can help you. Uh -huh. and so either I bring the, the, the one who can help you, which is Hashem, yeah. to you, or I bring you to Hashem. So Yosef was the one who brings Hashem to you. He brings us all the uh, spiritual levels down to us. Binyamin Tzadik Tachtun, he brings us closer to Hashem. Okay? Yeah. It's the difference between Tzadik Kel and Tzadik Tachtun. And what, what, what was unique about Yosef, besides the, the concept that he, that he is a, a, a Tzadik Elion that brings Hashem to us, so is that he was rooted in Atzilus. The Shvatim, the other, all the tribes are connected with Bria Atzilasia. Yosef is connected with Olam Ahdus, with the world of unity, with Atzilus, the world of emanation. All the levels in Atzilus and Be'efin Shel Ahdus. There everything is in a state of Ahdus, a state of unity. Yu v'chayu v'chad, yu v'gamu v'chad. It's all one. Hashem and his vessels are one with him, meaning the light and the kli, the the light and the vessel are one. Usually, the light is the, the flow, abundance comes the kli and contains it. Limitation. You would think there's a difference between the light and the kli. In Atzilus, they are one. Nothing is separate. There's no separation in Atzilus. Even the world, the world means usually concealment. We call it the world of Atsilus. So even the world within Atsilus, the concept of a world within Atsilus, even that level of a world is in a state of Achdus. Even the world within Atsilus is nullified to godliness. It says, if you, if you tap into the world of unity, everything is one. So therefore, there's no such a thing that one is interrupting the other. They, they all work in unison right. with one another. So if Yosef is involved with uh, making projections for uh, next year uh, uh, yield, okay? Yeah. At the same time, you can be connected to Hashem with nothing. There will be no separation whatsoever. But that's because he is, he is connected to the world of unity. Everything is in sync in him. In his psyche, everything is one. But on the other hand, if you are coming from the world of separation, then this is, an, this is a, a, a contradiction to my way, and this is, this is a contradiction, and this is... Con you can't. You have too many oppositions. This is opposing my thing. This is opposing my view. Because you're rooted from a world of separation. So every aspect is, if it's not exactly in line with you, it's, a, it's resistance and, inter, and uh, interruptions. That's exactly what happened with the tribes. Could you have a sport? Okay, let's have a sports team. You know, I don't know, baseball. You got a pitcher, a catcher, but they're all trying to do the same thing to win. So you could have unity even though each, each player got a separate function. Right, but for for uh, a specific uh, player, a specific team, if I tell them now to play a different game, they say, no, it's not serving us. It's it's, uh, it's the opposite. Go play basketball. They say, no, I'm, I'm, playing, I'm playing baseball. I'm right. playing basketball. Right. So it, it can only be doing one thing. Right. Yosef did all uh, uh, many different things and nothing moved him away from his main thing that it was a Merkava to Hashem, the chariot of God. Okay. Because if we're going to say that the, the team uh, mission is to win the game, right? Right. Anything else but winning the game is, is interruption. Right. For Yosef, the mission, what is, what is his game was? To win his game was to be one with Hashem. But anything that he did was not as a, an interruption for that mission. Yeah. 
Anything that he did was the mission. Even though it was physical and, and, and calculations and like we said, is the counting and, and running the country. And the tribe said, no, no, we can't do that. We have to be uh, away from all this because these things might, uh, might separate, us from, uh, separate us from Hashem or undermine our uh, devotion to God. Zeugram, remember the Maimon started with Bnei Gad and Bnei Uven, the tribe of God and the tribe of Uven, they're looking to stay on the other side of right. the other because they need the pastor, right? right. So Zeugram Atam, so it says, and regarding Yosef, Yosef always remained connected with God in his complete devotion, even though he was as while he was even involved in worldly matters. And that's why the sons of God and Reuben they wanted to stay on the other side of the Arden. Moke Mikne, a place of pastor. Why? Kivan Shabocha Ulloem Lias Rotson. They wanted to be shepherds. Kedeshinyon Olim, Loi Vabulis Navidosum. They wanted to be shepherds because they wanted that the worldly matters would not confuse them and interrupt their uh, the service to Hashem. It's like the people that are in the Kuala forever. They're not being, you know, they work right. being connected, just when uh, all the time, and uh, they have a family, whatever, somebody, the life worker, somebody gives them money. Right. But, you know, Chabad doesn't do that. You have people who go to Kodal, but they don't stay in Kodal yeah, for, for so many years. Yeah. Right. 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 So even after we explain the difference between the way Yosef served Hashem and the rest and the, and the tribes and how the tribes um, served Hashem We need to understand the difference that was explained earlier between Yosef and the tribes but this still does not explain why only Bnei Gad and Bnei Reuven wanted to stay on the other side. It says that all the tribes had, had in mind to, to be shepherds. So how come only Bnei Gad and Bnei Reuven are asking to stay on the other side? Well, they already knew about the... I mean, uh, in the, in the parshas. They knew they're going into the land. Yeah, they, they would have to they, to work the land. They knew that Hashem wasn't going to be happy after the, the story of the Moragbim, and they knew that you know if they didn't. So I Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruben are asking. Right. Well, Moshe <laughs> Rabbeinu gave them a hard time about it. So he said, if you don't go, you have to fight, and if you go in and fight. But no, okay. Moshe Rabbeinu, they they told Moshe Rabbeinu we're going to fight. Right, and he said, if you don't do it, then right. uh, you got to come with everybody else. So now that we explain the difference between the tribe and uh, the other tribes, all the tribes and Yosef, so all the tribes should ask for the same thing, to stay on the other side. Uh, would, That's what the Rabbi said, it still doesn't answer us. Hashem would have not... Uh, they, they would have, Hashem uh, would have really given it to them. So what's the difference between Bnei Gad and Bnei Reuven to the rest of the tribes? Okay. The line. Verse of Ozafi Mashakos Midrash. 
is, is a Midrash, Kohelis Rabbo. It says over there, Shevet Reuven Vegod Shechiko Atzum in a Gezer. Says that they were extremely careful with gezel. Yeah. What does he? What do you, what do you mean? What does stealing mean? Obviously, the the tribes didn't steal, but extremely careful with stealing means when you have a lot of animals. You gotta watch that they don't eat somebody else's grass. Exactly. So Hashem. It says in the Midrash that because they were so careful, Hashem gave them a gift that they will have land, so much pastures that they would never be, they, they wouldn't have to worry about stealing. He gave them a place, a nachal or inheritance, a piece of land in the places where there's no gazel, there's no stealing. It says that the place is a place of pasture. What is Gezel? Thief, stealing, it's a, something that is obviously negative. Connected with the other side, but there is also gezel kedusha. What is gezel kedusha? What is? Uh, how is the idea of gezel kedusha? What is? How did he do a holy stealing? Is there a close idea of biurim? It's explained Kabbalah and Hasidus that within the physical reality. There is godly uh, sparks, right? It's holy sparks. When a Jew comes in contact with them, in when a Jew engages with godly spark in a proper way, he elevates it, right? For example, using uh, physical things for for doing mitzvahs with it, you elevate it. What happens? The godly spark. Is now separated from the from any evil traces from the physical reality and ascending to its root, to its source, to the place where it, it uh, originally fell down from. Since holy sparks are embedded in physical things. Embedded in worldly physical things, He says that grabbing, taking the holy spark from the physical object that it was embedded in, it's a, a concept of gezel. You you stealing it from it. What is gazela? Stealing is you taking something from the possession of the, of, of the owner and you're taking it to your possession. So he says a similar thing happened with you taking the spark from the, from the physical object that it was in and now you're taking it out and taking it to a different, moving it from one possession to another. It says in the Midrash, Yalko Chimani, Shomar Yaakov Les Yaakov said to Esav, Shnei Oilomas Nefanein, we have two worlds in front of us. Oilomaze Vailomabu. We have this world and the world to come. Toila Toilomaze. Yaakov said to Esav, You should take this world. Vani etol oilomabo, and I'll have the world to come. Okay? Yeah. Sounds like a fair a fair deal. So Yaakov took his chelik, Esav took his chelik. 
שבו יעקב ביסלובון ורו לא יסו בוני ובונוס, when יעקב comes back from the house of לובן, right after 20 years in the house of לובן, and אסף notices that he has boys and girls and slaves, אבודי משפוחס, slaves and maidservants, מיטל השמיים משמן אורץ, that all the blessings that יעקב... that Yaakov received from Yitzchak, he sees it. Omar lei, so Esav said to Yaakov, Yaakov, achi, Yaakov, my brother, lei kach, Omar tali. This is not what you told me. Sheti tolato elom abo, you told me you're going to take the world to come. And I should take this world, v'ani ha'elom azeh. Menai lecho kol ha'moyin azeh. From where do you have all this money? This is not your portion, right? We made a deal. Since Esau claims that the, this world belongs to him, that's his chalik, that's his portion. So removing godly, holy sparks from physical things, from the chalik of Esau, is gazel. It doesn't belong to Yaakov, it belongs to Esau. And the truth is that Esav is connected with the world of Toyu. And physical things are connected from the world of Toyu. Yaakov is Tikkun. You're taking it from the possession of Toyu to Tikkun. You're taking it back. You, you're taking something from this world so, to Elam Abba. So you're taking it to a different world. So he's gypped. He's gypped. And that's why he's complaining. And that's why there's a gazelle of Lumaza, meaning the gazelle of the other side. There's a gazelle of in, in Tuma, that stealing from somebody, and they can say on the other side, it's a holy, holy stealing. So we make a kiddush on the wine, and we're stealing, they make, getting the sparks from the wine. Right. It was supposed to be, uh, belong to Esau. People get drunk, get plastered, they, the stupidity, instead, making kiddush. Vadech mashekosu vayish b'menu shevi says when the 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 Canaanite, the king of Ar, Ar, Arad, he uh, fought the Jewish people. He captured. He had a captive. It says in singular, captive, not captives. Baish bimenu shevi. So, what does it mean? That he has something, and we are. We are redeeming those sparks from from captivity. The sparks that the lumos of the other side is is holding is holding onto. We are releasing it. We are freeing it. That we taking the the holy sparks from the enemy, and we are transferring them and elevating them to a holy domain to the other side. It says that the Midrash tells us that they have distant themselves, the, the sons of God and the son of Reuven, they distant themselves from stealing. They didn't want to get involved with elevating the sparks. Even Gezel of Kedusha they didn't want to do. Even stealing of, of, the, of the, the side of Kedusha they were not involved in doing. They didn't want to enter the world and be involved in elevating godly sparks. When entering the land of and Bikshu. And that's why they wanted to stay on the other side, the Kabbal Achuzah, to receive a, a, a piece of land, Be'ever Ayad, the Mizrach, and the eastern side of the, of the Jordan. But they had to still do their mitzvah. So since there will be a, a, a shepherd, there will be shepherds, they will not be involved in any work that obligates them to engage in worldly things. They will not get involved with, uh, with elevating sparks. So they're not doing any kind of gesel. Not holy gezel, not the... Uh, yeah, but they still got to do the mitzvahs. So you got to put on tefillin. So you put on tefillin, then you got to... Uh, you're taking a spark from the tefillin. 
No, but there is much more than that. Is is people that are involved in uh, like Yosef, involved with all. Uh, is they, so they limited the, what they have to do, but they don't want to go uh, all out all right. into to the world. Okay. Plow the land, do all these things. If you are a shepherd, you need to eat bread. You sell a sheep and uh, you That's, eat bread. That was the whole <laughs> argument with the Maragla. I mean, what, they said, oh, she stay here with the, the, the Shekhinah and have a nice day. Right. And Hashem said, no, you got to go. Uh, and that's why Moshe is associated with the Maragla. He said, you got to do the same thing that the spies right. did. That's how they had to make the deal about fighting. But we see that it's not so simple that with them, the fact that they were, uh, that they were granted what they wanted it shows that they're, it's coming from a different place. It's not uh, right. like the uh, spies. So there are two midrashim, and the rabbi says we can we need to make a uh, we need to somewhat put the two together. But even though the two midrashim, each one telling us something else, meaning they're telling one speaks about the praise of the. They distance themselves from stealing, right. and on spiritual level, they didn't want it, They didn't want to get involved with even elevation of sparks because it constitutes taking uh, the oil of Mazer, taking uh, holy sparks and transferring them to another domain, to the domain of kedusha. And then there's a midrash that says that they had too much liking to their money. Who? The Bnei God and Bnei Reuven. The uh, tribe of God and the tribe of Reuven. That's opposite of what we're just saying. That they like their money so much that they wanted to stay on the other side. Because, remember, you can say that, uh, remember I told in the beginning, that how come they had more than all the other tribes? Because, because they, they didn't eat. eat. Right. So you can them. say, because Hashem gave them the money, why wouldn't they eat the money? Oh, so they, 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 they wanted to make a big investment, so they figured out. Oh, they wanted to save. I mean, their money. So now you're turning it all around. Right, turning it to the other side. So, so even Moshe Rabbeinu said, because the way they presented, how they pitched Moshe Rabbeinu, they said, we're going to build, we're going to build a stables and barns for our animals. Yeah. And we're going to build houses for our children. Right. And then we're going to go to, uh, we'll go to war. Yeah. We'll go to war and we'll come back. Yeah. We'll stay here. Moshe Rabbeinu afterwards said the opposite. Right. First, you should build houses for your children and then you'll build the barns for your animals. You understand? They flip. Yeah. He flipped it. They said, first, we'll build the. So, the Midrash says, oh, you like money because uh, they're worrying about the investment before they're worrying about their children. Ah. Uh, okay. So. Valem Nema, so it says in Mishle, Nachlo Mevueles, that it's inheritance that was received with impulsiveness, quick decision. So the two, the two Midrashim that's dealing with the reason why Bnei God and Bnei Reuven wanted to have inheritance on the other side of the other and are contradicting one another. One midrash is praising the sons of God and the son of the, the sons of God and the sons of Reuven, and it was given to them because of their greatness. They wanted to stay away from Gezel. but the second says it, the second midrash tells us it's nachlam evoilus. It's something that was received in haste, and it speaks about the opposite of of praise, that they they made the, the primary. Secondary, and they made the secondary primary. It's like a, a guy that works so hard that he never home, and he, by the time he gets home, his family is already gone. 
His wife doesn't want to live with him anymore. Wants to, he wants, she wants to get divorced. She moves on with her life. He says, well, one second, I worked all these years. <laughs> they say, you, you were gone. You were gone, we moved on. Right? Yeah. But uh, you make the, 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 so you made the ikar, the main thing. Why did you go to work to begin with to provide to your family? Mm -hmm. You forgot about your family. You forgot you were too involved with your your job. You lost your family. So you made the ikar tofel. The the main thing, the primary thing, you made it secondary. You made it uh, tofel. It's not important. And the tofel, you made it the main thing. You made the money the main thing. So that's what the middle says about them. So how does it work? One middle says something positive about some of says that they were, it, it was really opposite. According to the inner meaning, but Gezel in line 18, it says, It says, if you listen to the to the to the Pirush about Gezel, they distance themselves from Gezel. Yeah. That within that Pirush you have two Pirushim, you have two interpretations, because one Pirush tells you they distance themselves from thieves. From thievery, but on the other hand, it says the the chassidus tells you they didn't want to do uh, they didn't want to elevate the spark they didn't they didn't want to elevate holy sparks taking sparks in the possession of the world from physical possession elevating them to the source yeah, which is to a high world That's which is a negative, negative thing right. so even within the positive you hear negative. <laughs> When Moshe heard that the sons of God and the sons of Reuven, they're not looking to enter the land. And the inner reason is because they didn't want to come in contact with this, with this world. They didn't want to do the They didn't want to do. They didn't want to elevate sparks. And the reason why they didn't want to do it because they were scared. They figured that if they will do it, they will be interrupted from serving Hashem, from their devotion, their connection to godliness. The Moshe Rabbeinu rebukes them right away, admonishes them. It's a very long monologue of of uh, rebuke. Yeah. Was to bring das to draw down das in godliness, even to to lower level of neshamis. Neshamis they are called zera beima. The pasuk it says zorati is basis so zera adam zera beima. There's two type of seed. There's the seed of animal and the seed of man. There's neshamis that are called the seed of man, and there are neshamis that are called the seed of animal. They're both human beings, but one is called seed of man, seed of animal. What's the difference between the two? So, so uh, you have lofty neshamis that are rooted in Adam alien, in the supernal man. They have great knowledge in godliness. And they are called Zera Adam. And then you have other Nishomis. Now the Rebbe writes in Torah, oh, that this is all the Nishomis of our generation. Yeah. That have no Das in, in Elikus on, uh, in a high level. And they are called Zera Beimu. Zoma Shekosu, it says in the second part of Shema, Venotati Esiv Besod Cholivim Techo. I have, I have given grass 
in your field for your animal. We said in Shema every day, in volume Shema. Moshe Rabbeinu tell the Jewish people that if they will listen and keep the mitzvahs, then Hashem will give us grass for the animals. Moshe Rabbeinu was da'asel, you are in supernal knowledge. The root of his neshama was connected with das. Which is even superior to the world of Atzilus. The highest world within the four worlds. And it tells us that Moshe Rabbeinu is das and even higher than Atzilus. And that's why he was capable to draw down das in godliness even in the lower neshamas. Neshamas that are called zero beim. giving them the ability to deal with physical things in such a way that they will not be interrupted from their Avoid us Hashem from serving Hashem. Is this, is this, is this like an argument to B'nai God? And yeah, Moshe Rabbeinu is rebuking them. Why are Moshe Rabbeinu is rebuking B'nai God? He they say, the why don't you want to go in? Because you have, you're afraid that dealing with the world will interrupt your connection with Hashem. That's my job, to give you that capability to give you a, to give you power that it should not affect you. Okay. That it, that the world should not interrupt you. That's why he's that's why he's reproving them. Moshe Rabbeinu is giving them das. He says, for that. What do I mean for that? In order for the neshamas to receive das from Moshe, they need to have mesilus nefesh. And that's why Moshe said to them, Im tichotzu, if you will go to war, meaning if you will have Mesil's nefesh, right. lifna avaye, you will join the other tribes in the war. Milchama award, uh, world, it, when it comes to a war, it requires Mesil's nefesh. Venich b'shoavetz, and then you will conquer the land. And then this land will be your inheritance. Shal deizeh, by him, by them participating in the war, they will have the greatness of entering the land. They will have the mila, the advantage of, of them entering the land. It says in the words of Kalev, Kalev ben Yifune, and Yeshua ben Nun, after the Miraglim spoke negatively, on Eretz Yisrael, Toivos moid moid. Because Moshe Rabbeinu compared the request of Bnei Gadim Neruven not to receive inheritance in the land to what the Meraglim was saying. Right. And in, in Hasidus it's ex explained what we just said before, that the Meraglim also had the concern that uh, it would uh, interrupt, that b being involved with the world will interrupt their connection with Hashem. The, the way they had it in the in the midbar, the the way they served the Shem in the midbar, they were afraid that it will be interrupted. And over here, it's explained that through Mesilus Nefesh, you can receive from Moshe Rabbeinu Das in godliness, even on the in the other side of the Yarden, like in Eretz Yisrael. And it says Toivam Od Moed that it, you will not have interruptions. Every Yarden is also part of Eretz Yisrael. Legabi Shah Rotsis in 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 comparison to other uh, other lands, Kumoisha Kosava Tsemach Sedek the Tsemach Sedek wrote in our Torah, the third Lubavi Chab, the Khil Noik bot Trumas Truma is Sumasim Doraisa. It says the Ever Ayarden, all the laws of Trumas and Mysus are applicable, biblically applicable to the other side of the Yarden. So it's still considered all the mitzvahs that are associated with the land are, are also 
applied to every Yavne, the other side of the eastern side of the Yavne, we call Mok in Eretz Yisrael, Gufin and Kamaris Mudregis, but nevertheless, in Eretz Yisrael, there are Kama Milos, there are a few advantages and levels, so Kedit Amidosh, Eser Kedushis, and there are ten Kedushis. Midrash Rabbah speaks about the greatness of Eretz Yisrael, Kedit Amidosh, Eretz Yisrael, Mekudesh, and we call our voices, the Eretz Yisrael is sanctified from all the other lands. Eretz Kenan, Mekudesh, and Ever Ayarden, and the Eretz Kenan is still higher in, in Kedusha than, than the other side of the Arden. You have uh, cities that are surrounded with walls. Yushalayim, Arabai, is the Chel, the Ezos Noshim, Ezos Yisrael, Zakanim, all different places. And then ultimately the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Holy of Holies, the, 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 the holiest place, Vainu Shever Ayadun, Bechagdush Ezos Yisrael. So Ever Ayadun is part of Eretz Yisrael. It also has the Kedusha, the sanctity of Eretz Yisrael. And the Kodesh is Mekol Arot, so it's sanctified from all the other lands. And we call Mokim. Nevertheless, ain't the kedusha Eretz Kenan. It's not like the kedusha of Eretz Kenan. So you yeah, have a yarden it has kedusha, but it's not the same as as the sorgdei shegam et zbnei ruven zbnei gad. Shekibul in order for zbnei gad zbnei ruven shekibul nachalos from every yarden they receive their inheritance in in every yarden. They will have the greatness of Eretz Yisrael in a complete way. So they needed to, to, to uh, practice Mesir Snefesh in actuality to do it. They needed to enter the land. They needed to go into the land and uh, and conquer, to conquer the land. So through Mesir Snefesh. And the, the and which leads to Moshe Rabbeinu's flow on the Moshe Rabbeinu influence. The Moshe Rabbeinu influence on you can be activated only if you practice Mesilus Nefesh. Practice Mesilus Nefesh, Moshe Rabbeinu is affecting you. Then they merited to have the greatness of Eretz soul and nothing and they were they were not deficient of anything. So wait a minute. So the land, okay, we're the, on the eastern side, which is now Jordan. So they they had, they had to take a Meiser and Truma and over yes. there. Yes. So, so what? We From there, whatever grew over there, they needed to give Truma to Meiser. So right now, anybody that would be in happen if, if a Jew. There's would still happen. places in uh, I don't know where the Syria or whatever that the, that's part of it is so. If you look at the boundaries that the Torah describe, yeah. what is actually at his soul, it's much bigger than what they. Uh, right. So when they talk about the whole land thing, it's a whole different mind. Yes, the kasher kol anal imash kosu b'tchias apar shavai daba moish rosh amate is a dovah shetzivavai ish kider ned. So we connect it. We can connect all the above. With the beginning of the parsha, the Moshe speak to the head of the tribes, Rosh Hamatis, and he said to them, "This is what Hashem has commanded: a man that makes a vow, Ishkid or Neder, right? That's the beginning of the parsha. If someone makes a vow, Inyan on Adorim, yeah. speaks about vows, Vatoras on Adorim, and the annulment of vows, Aladei yeah. Chacham through a, a, a sage, Yochid Mumche, someone that is specialized in in." A, Vows in annulling vows is considered like three judges. Shoeker Sanedo Miko that that he has the capability of uprooting the vow from its root, meaning that he annuls the vow in a complete way as if there was no nether. Yes. Not there was a nether, he completely annuls the vow. Vainyan Baze Pirsidas Deina Nether when you are precious. What is nether? Nether is primarily precious. So you're separating yourself. You say, oh, I have weakness to wine. From now on, I'm not drinking. So it's, it's separating yourself. It says in Pirkovis, Nedorim siag le precious. What is Nedorim leads you? To, to be separated from different things. Ruhu bechinas bina. 
So in, in Kabbalah and Hasidus is explained that Nadorim, Prishus, separation, distancing yourself from uh, the desires of the world is the concept of Tshuva. Tshuva is associated, reaches all the way to Bina, and that's why we say Kol Nidre in Yom Kippur. Nadorim, separating ourselves from different things. That's the inner of Tshuva. But on the other hand, the level of Chochmah, you don't need to have precious. Only from the level of up to Bina you need precious. But not when it comes to Chochmah, you don't need to separate yourself. And you're capable of elevating the world, elevating what needs to be elevated in the world, and even to transform darkness into light, without being affected by it. When it comes to Bina, that's where the, the Yesh is kicking in. The existence of the Yesh kicks in. Right? Bina is expansion of the idea. Too many details that are creating depth, length, width. And when there is a reality... When there is an existence, yesh, then you need to make fences for it and limitations. Yesh no yana neder. Then neder, the neder comes in. Sheperish gamidvarim b'turim shuvalum. And then you're distancing yourself even from permissible things. Why are you distancing yourself from permissible things? Kedesh lo yavar belu v'yoridu madrigos v'avirasim so it shouldn't confuse you and they shouldn't drag you down. You don't do nether for something that is forbidden. It's forbidden in you anyway and not allowed to, to do. Right. Nether you do from things that are permissible for you. Like I said, wine. You're allowed to drink wine. It doesn't say you could have filled this thing with a whole uh, thing of wine. Yeah. There's no problem. Instead of saying shakal, it's about bagaf and just sip through the day right. uh, wine. <laughs> Maybe it's not a bad idea. Try it. You might. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that <laughs> Just the kid is just enough. Om nam, but chacham has the capability of putting the vow. He mitzad bechin as a chacham she she inyan bitu b'mitzius. What is chacham chacham is bitu? We said bina is already yesh. Chacham is bitu. Shulavad Yehud, Hashem is the only Metzius, Hashem is the only existence. Ben Zulosoy, and there's nothing outside of him. Shazem, Madrigas Achachmo, that's the level of Chachmo. As the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, when when Chachmo shines, Ein Mokum Lechashash in Yon Aelum Vabulum Avedus Avai. There's no concern that the worldly things will confuse them from Avedus Hashem, from serving Hashem, because they have no way. They're not. They're not significant. Therefore, there is no need to distance yourself from permissible things. It says in the Gemara in Yerushalmi, in, in uh, I believe it's Kiddushin, it says, A person would pay, would have to give accounting, reckoning for everything that his eyes saw and he did not eat. That he abstained. By being involved in the world, you elevate the world. To make them vessels for godliness. The Gemara in Yerushalmi. But that's only if you level if you if you operate on the level of chachma, if you operate on the level of bina, that could drag you down. Like the Alter Rebbe said about uh, Chosid, that was uh, he saw him eating cholent. He said that he saw an ox eating. He didn't see a, a person eating. He was so involved with the cholent that he became the cholent. He himself was. Uh, and the head of the matis, the head of the midos, is Bina. 
Shishir Shemokha Midas Bina is the source for the Midas. Emotive attributes are generated from the Bina, from the, from the level of understanding. Aim Habonim, that's why it's called the mother of the children. The children are the emotive attributes, and the mother is the Bina. Moishu is higher than Bina. Moishu is Chachma. is the root for Bina. Bezel, Vaidabe Moishu. Going into Yudalef. One, Vaidabe Moishu, Rosh Hamat, is his own. Tiyas Krachmi Moishu. Moishu speaks to the head of the tribes. Moishu is Chachma. Bechinas Chachma, Le Rosh Hamat, is Bechinas Bina. Moishu is giving to Bina. Nesina Skoyach, Moishu is giving them power. To give them the capability of annulling vows. Even if someone was in a state that he needed to be separated from different things, he has now the capability of overcoming it without being separated from it. They will be elevated to such a level of bitu, to godliness, they wouldn't need any more atosnadot. They wouldn't have to separate themselves from permissible things. They'll be able to do the opposite, in, be involved in them and elevate them to Kedusha. That's why it says regarding the nether, regarding vows, this is what Hashem has commanded. This specifically, Hashem commanded the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu's nevuah was always. Zeh. Our other Nevi'im, they said, Koi Omar Hashem. Moshe said, Zeh Adobo. What's the difference? Koi is vague. Vague, I'm not sure. Eh, somewhere there, Koi. Zeh is, this is it. I see it. It's right here in front of us. Moshe Rabbeinu Nevi'im was very vivid, clear. He was like seeing everything. Moses point in front of him. Yeah. He saw the essence of things. Koi also in Chesidus, it speaks about, uh, it's related to worlds and created beings that are existence for themselves, that are separated. The world of Bria, Tzirasia, creation, formation, and action, Leikus uh, is concealed. Zeh is referring to the reality that is nullified to godliness in a complete way. The world of Atzilus. Elikus is revealed, godliness is, is revealed. And when it comes to something that is revealed, and, in, and obvious and clear, we say Zeh. Marebet's boy, he points with his finger and he says, this is it. Like when uh, they left Mitzrayim, they said, Zeh keli van beu, this is godliness, they saw it. So you see the essence, you're not just, there's, there's not, uh, there's no gray area, you just see it. So from the level of Meshur Rabbeinu, revelation of Zeh, it gives power for every single Jew to, to do the Aved of Biru Oilam, to elevate the world. Chol Zeh, Wadech, Mashin is Boer, Leil, Shemesh Rabbeinu, Sin Kach Lashvotim. So Mesh Rabbeinu gives the power to the tribes, Shem Bechina Shneim Oso Boko. They were all on the level of, we said, Bria Etzir Asiya, 12 bulls. Shiyuch Lulis Asik, Binyon Oilam, Bafi Shiloh Yisbal, Shiloh Yisbal, Bafi Shiloh Yisbal, Bafi Shiloh Yisbal, Bafi Shiloh Yisbal, engage in the world in such a way that it will not mix what confuse them from their work. So why to stay on the other side? You can get Moshe, if Moshe Rabbeinu, it's like somebody comes to you with a, with a complaint, but you are, c- are capable of seeing behind the complaint what really bothers them. Right. They said, oh, we want to stay here because there's a lot of, an- a lot of uh, pasture for the animals. What was the, really the reason why they wanted to stay? Because they didn't want to do Aveda Sabirurim. Why did they want to do Aveda Sabirurim? Because they were afraid it will interrupt their, their connection with Hashem. Right. But, uh, but Moshe says, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm going to help you that you wouldn't be interrupted. That it will not be. Inter- 
you can still be involved in the world. You do a Veda Sabirum, it will not to, uh, uh, confuse you. My rabbi used to say something like this is over smart. Yeah. Everything we see in the Torah is an instruction. The Torah is a book of instruction. It's not a book of history. A book of instruction tells us what to do. So even when we speak about the difference between Yosef and the other tribes, and the difference between Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruben and the other tribes, he said every Jew has to have two ways of serving Hashem. Like the sons of Reuben and God, and they received their inheritance on the other side of the Alden. But they nevertheless, they had the concept of that they crossed the Yarden. That they did go to war. They were partners in the entry to the land. They got involved in the world. It says in general, there's two ways of how the Aves served Hashem. And the tribes. You have a supernal union and the lower union. Two types of, 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 uh, of Aveda. One is that the world... That the reality does not take any space, meaning it's completely bitul b'metzius, understanding, recognizing, grasping the unity of Hashem on a higher level, in such a way, such a, such a level that the physical reality does not take any space. Complete bitul b'metzius, and then you have ichudat ato, understanding Hashem also. Unity of Hashem, but it's on a low level that the Mitzvahs, the reality, yeah, has has its grasp, has it takes it takes it, has a significance. But nevertheless, although it's significant, it's nullified to godliness. It's explained Kutan says it's Chaim. Rebbe Rashab wrote this Kuntres. Fifth Lubavitcher. Rebbe Shav Shavimidas Kol Odo. Yeah, it's Chaim is Kabbalah. The Rebbe Rashab also has a kunt to say Meaning, Shav primarily, most regular people, they serve Hashem with the law union, Yehuda Tato. Since it's a regular person, it's very hard to get to the level of Yehuda law. That all the worlds it means nothing and it is insignificant. It's as if it doesn't exist. Every person is obligated to come to the second level of bitul yichudai law. So that gives you the power that even you, avedo yichudat ato will be a complete Avedo, but he would not fall from his level. What? Not to fall from, I mean, sometimes you can think on an upper level, but you know, day, yeah. day to day, you're not, it's hard to keep there. Not to no, he said, even though you may not avoid as Yichud Tato, most regular people right. are involved with the world, but understand that Hashem, that the world is really nullified to godliness, but to think that the world is completely nothing, everything is insignificant, say, no, it's the so that at least you have to have from time to time that understanding. The primary is is elevating the sparks, coming in contact with the world. Being engaged in the world, not Yehudai law. If you engage in the world, obviously it's not Yehudai law, it's Yehudai Tato. It's the lower union. We find that the those who lived in Yericho, they would uh, they connect the first pasuk of Shema to Vavta Hashem They didn't make any uh, separation between Echod and Vavta. 
They didn't say Boch Shagwal Machus to Elnovoy. They say Shma is such an occasion of God, Vavta Semiroi Kecho. Why? I know Shavidos and Moisab of Shehudai law. Their avoid the Ansherichho was such a way that it was supernal union. Yehudai law, Shema Echod. Shema is speaking about unity of Hashem. So they skipped the Yehuda Tato. They went straight to Vavta, the Ansherichah. But the rabbis were not pleased with it. The Gemara in Psachim 56a speaks about it. And the Gemara says they were not happy with it. The rabbis were not happy with uh, the conduct of Anshi Yericho. Because primary work needs to be Yichud You need to be involved with the world. You have to have at least, at least a little bit of Yichud Ha'ilo. Of the supernal union. And then makes you Lower union, a true avoid of chibush ne fane avoid an alwal de chibush ne isim yosef yuda. And connecting these two levels is through connecting yosef and yehuda, connecting the two eitzim. I, I believe it probably the uh, it's a famous haftor. It's a prophecy of Yechezkel that Hashem uh, Hashem uh, instructed them to take uh, two uh, two trees. And uh, and connect them together. It has to be this week. Next week is uh, this this Shabbos because next Shabbos is Shabbos. Uh, uh, May I don't think it's left all this week, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Connecting these two, Yosef and Yehuda. When the prophecy of Yechezkel speaks of that Hashem instructed them to take two staffs or two pieces of wood, one for Yosef, one for Yehuda, two kingships, and to connect them together, and shows us that in the time of Mashiach there will be one kingdom, uh, the kingdom of, of David from the tribe of Yehuda, which spiritually it means to connect the two types of avodas, avodas yes, avodas yehuda, the two ways of uh, the two different uh, paths. Yes, even the tribes and bnei gadim neruven. The power to connect the two ways to bring yehuda tato a revelation of yehuda law. Then Moshe. It's through Moshe Rabbeinu, Kanez, Beinia, Veda, Moshe Rashama, Zadov, again. The way to do it is through Moshe Rabbeinu. That's what Moshe, Moshe speaks to Rosh Hamatis. He gives them the Sinas Koyach. He gives them the power to be Chochom, to annul the vows. Welcome to you.